Shalom. Just want to make a, uh, another targeted individual, targeted individual video. You know, um, just based on experience and c consider that scripture that says. Basically examine all things or listen to all things and hold on to that which is good. Um, I'm going to try to use words that are not offensive, but I'm going to try to be as true and real as I can. So I might change some words to not be as quite as offensive. So I just say this for consideration. I'm not telling anybody what to do or order anybody what to do. Just consider the things I say. And if you can take some out of it that is good, then that's the purpose. So, uh, like I said, a lot of things I was... Ex I'm still ignorant to a, a lot of things, but I, I was a, extremely ignorant to the point of embarrassment now that I look back on it. You know, basically, I ran by the, the the ways of the world, so to speak. The way people say I was led astray, like most young people are today. Basically, are led by the concepts of what the, the illusions of the world. So I, I I'll say also consider if you have young children, consider to learn from those who are older now that can give good, sound, I wouldn't say advice, but experience. Just, just, you know, when people tell you their stories, so I'm not telling you, giving you no advice or nothing like that. Just consider when you hear older people talk, to listen to the experiences that possibly could be helpful. So that's all I'm doing, is giving experiences. Like I said, when I grew up, um, I, I, I basically didn't grow up with my mother side of the family. Um, you know, like I said, I don't know the all the details of what everything that went on. Raised by my grandmother on my dad's side. Um, I know both sides were Israelites. My grandmother. You know, she basically looked like uh, the traditional aboriginal. Both sides were well, both grandmothers. And grandfathers, but just considering. But since I was raised on my grandmother's side, on my dad's side, she looked like a traditional uh, copper colored woman. Long indigenous hair. She, uh, she had a brother that lived in the back named uh, OZ, Ozabazi, I believe his name. He had a brother named Levi. And I can remember OZ having what they say the Israelites had. He had long, dreaded hair before he cut it. That was my uh, dad's mother and his uncle. I'm just remember what I'm seeing now. I'm, I'm relating back to what I remember seeing growing up. Then the book of Ruth talks about Boaz Kinman being named Malin. My my dad's name was Malin. So growing up in, in a situation like that, you know, seeing a lot of things that go on with this they quote unquote the hood. I was, despite of the things I did not know, the most highest 
had chose me back then. A lot of times I did not know it. But he showed me through his actions. I, I, I grew up without confidence. I was always quiet. Very quiet because I felt like I really was nobody. My, my thoughts didn't matter. What I said didn't matter. Nobody. Mm, I felt like I was loved, but I, I really didn't feel that way all the time. Um, let me see what else I can say. I remember growing up, I wasn't confident with, with, with young ladies and things of that nature. I had a lot of insecurities. Grew up with acne, things like that. So I, I really didn't have the confidence to really talk to young ladies. And then I, I really was never trained on how to really interact with young ladies, things of that nature, even with anyone really, uh, you know, because I was always secluded from the standpoint of, because I had, I had no confident, really, confidence. Others thought more of me than I thought of myself in a lot of a lot of instances. And then from that standpoint, because others knew something about me that I did not know, they were more confident in me than I was in myself. And that, from that standpoint, I probably let a lot of people down because they, they knew I could do better. But I didn't know I could do better because I didn't believe in myself. But then the Most High came in and made sure that certain things happened that I could see that he was with me. When I played football, uh, most young men who played, they had their uh, mothers and fathers would come to the games. You know, a, a certain ones would come to the games. But I had nobody, and this, this is not a sad story, I'm just telling the truth. I really didn't have anybody that can come to my games. So, the Most High had given me talent, and in that talent, it made a way for me to have others to root me on and to cheer me on because they ch cheered on the blessings that the Most High bestowed upon me, that talent. So, I, like I said, I, you know, I love these people to this day. People I grew up playing football with, I I, I, I root for their offspring. No, no, I ain't gonna use that term, offspring. Their uh, children. I don't want to call their names, but they know what I'm talking about. One particular young young man who I love. He was a little older than me. His young his son is playing in the NFL today for the Philadelphia Eagles. You know what I'm talking about. Uh. And I cheer him on to this very day. You know. So that's how it is. I don't, I don't have hate. But I remember growing up playing football as a young man. A young kid about eight years old or something like that. And then one year, I wanted to be a running back. Because I know I had the talent. Other young kid, children around me know I had the talent. But then the coach, you know, they know who they know. So it's not their fault. So I said, oh, you know, I want to try for running back this year. And then the, uh, the coach said, well, on this team, you know, they called me by my numb the gear back then. You know, the numb the gear that I have. Uh, authority over to answer for if I choose. So... So on this team, and I'll say that number year, on this team number year, you going to play defensive end. I said, all right. You know, I didn't really want to play defensive end, but I said, okay. But I still had the ability to do it. And then I told the story. I told it before, but I made it came off as if I was being arrogant or something. So but that's not the purpose. I was just trying to tell the story. 
But I, cause you know, I love them, they love me, I believe. So I was just better to tell a story of what happened. Not to put them down, but this is what happened. I um So basically what happened was he I just turned the video off so it wouldn't make make a noise. So when when they when they came through around my my side because I believe I was playing uh what was it Tidy Mighty Mike Mice? I think that was my first year of Mighty Mice. I think that's what it was. He was coming around the, the corner around this other this other running back and this young man I, that I love as well. When I say I love them, they my brothers. Not my nat not my natural but brothers through the, uh, my mother, but I call them my brothers because. I grew up with. So he came around the corner to block him. I moved. I know I juked him a little bit. Moved, went around him, and I kind of hit the other young man that was running the ball kind of hard. Then the coach kind of got mad and said, "You gonna block him? Well, you ain't gonna block him." So he came around again. I, I moved around him. Hit him. And then the third time he did it, uh, the running back fumbled the ball into my hand. And then somehow I was able to catch the ball, do my thing like I do, and score a touchdown. And then the year after that, I was a starting running back. So that was the most high showing me that he has, he, he's the one who has the final word, in spite of what man says. You know, so a lot of things happen like that in my life. And then I remember this elder. He wasn't not a church elder or nothing like that. He was just an older man in the neighborhood. And I'm not judging him according to the things he did. He, you know, he made his mistakes in his life. But he saw the, um, the, the, the lack of confidence in my life. And there was this young lady. Who had came up to me asking me about this other young man. And because, you know, I had a lack of confidence, I was just happy she was talking to me. So I said, oh yeah, he, he you know, I'm, I don't even know him like that. And I'm speaking up for him. And then the, the elder kind of felt disgusted in my lack of confidence. So he came up and said, hey man, you know how elders do in your neighborhood, the older gentleman, the older man. Hey man, don't don't be having her come up to you asking you about some other man. He said you got a hard stick and some bubble gum too. You know I use the word stick. I was trying to be keep it light. That was his words. Basically telling me, hey man, have some confidence in yourself. Don't have nobody else coming to you. No woman that coming to you asking you about some other man. If she wanna go ask him, go ask him. If she can come talk to you, let her talk, ask about you. That's basically what he was saying. And you be confident enough, enough to speak up for yourself. Not speaking up for some other man. So, a lot of times, like I said, I've always been a good-hearted man. Uh, even from that standpoint, a good-hearted young man. Did I always do what was good and was right? No. But I always had a good heart to do what is right. A lot of times I have a lack of confidence of not wanting to put anybody down. I wouldn't tell people no. And that happened, that, that carried on all the way until recently. <laughs> you know, had to grow. When I did tell lies, it wasn't to hurt anyone, but a lot of times I just wanted people to like me. So I didn't want them to look at me in a, in a bad light. So if I lied, it was from the standpoint of, you know, I, I want to form a concept to make people think that I was 
somebody they can like. So, then I can also tell you that I've had experiences where the Most High has basically let me know that He's with me. Let me know I'm truly His son. Does that mean that He don't have other sons? That's not what I'm saying. I'm speaking for myself. Also, people judge according to their own understanding, their own likes and dislikes. And then what they do, they get together and they form an opinion about others. And then they'll say, they'll use this for instance, because I heard somebody say this to me before. Well, you know, we don't like you. I only see you though. What you mean we? And I only see you. So you speaking for a whole bunch of other people? That's because that one that one man or person or whoever they are has decided that they don't like you. So they, they put on a campaign to include everybody else in their circle not to like you. So they say we don't like you. So, well, you know, we don't like him. So if you like him, you're not a part of us. So other pe like people, minded like people like them who are weak-minded and can't stand up on their own two feet from the standpoint of making their own decisions will be included in the we that don't like you because they don't want to say they like you but yet and still secretly they'll come up to you time and time again hey how you doing man what's up now but then when you, but when you when they with them they don't say nothing to you because they part of we So consider, like I said, whatever you've done in the past is the past. You can't change that. That's why the scripture says today is the day of salvation. Today, make up your mind to do what is right, to do what is honorable, to learn what is right, to learn what is honorable, and do the best you can from this day forward. Nobody can hold you accountable in the, to the past because if you were to look at their lives, They've done something that they're not proud of either. That's why the scripture says, do not judge unless you be judged. Because all those who are judging you have also done something, that, some things in the past that they're not uh, proud of. And that if somebody was to open up and put their life on the big screen, they would have to repent. That's why he also said, you without, who was out sin, you cast the first stone. Because you know everybody else done sin. And if you draw a stone at somebody, you basically judging yourself guilty. Because you judging them and you judging yourself. But those who are putting, he said, forgetting those things which are past and that are behind and press towards the high call the honorable call to do what is right today. Then no man can judge. That's why he told the woman called in adultery, he said, Mary, where are your accusers? Yea, Lord, I don't see no I don't see anybody. So no man judges you. So neither do I. Go and sin no more. He didn't say that she wasn't gonna make no mistakes, but don't have the desire, the purpose in your heart to deliberately do what's wrong. And nobody can judge you on your past. That's why I'm telling you all the time, I repent. I, I changed from the things that I've done wrong, that I knowingly done wrong. I tried to tell people that I can, that I'm sorry. Even I ever told you when I worked. I called that organization the heads of them. And I acknowledged to them. I said, you know, I didn't tell them this, but they, they, they got on record that I'd done, I'd done a lot of good when I worked. 
but there were periods of times when based on how I was feeling, the things I was going through and not knowing how to handle them, that I was not always honorable from the standpoint of my actions at that time because I was acting out of uh, frustration, out of not knowing how to act, not knowing what to do. But that's why when I had the opportunity to talk to them, to their heads, I said, you know, I apologize for not always being the best employee I could have been when I worked. And they said they forgave me. And they said, okay. And I said, thank you. And then also, from that standpoint, they acknowledged the things that uh, they did wrong, you know, as far as the things that they acknowledged. That's why they allowed me to have a safety retirement. Um, now it's a thing going on where there's an element where, you know, you, you know, you make up uh, profiles on Facebook and Twitter and you make emails and different things. You don't have to use your appellation for those things. You can use anything you want to use as long as it's not, don't, you know, nobody else can speak for it and nobody has the authority uh, to overstand it like you do, that it's not your rightful right to use those things. So like for instance, if I use a certain name or title on Facebook, I have the right to speak for that title while I'm using Facebook. But I'm always the jour I'm always sejurist. I'm always being myself the living sentient man. And no one can subjugate me behind that a person name. Or anything that is mine by right. I have the right to use it or receive it. And not be subjugated as a uh a legal fiction entity that can be bought, traded, sold, or any, any such thing under subjugation, or subrogation, hypothecation, or personation. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. But you shall understand it because that's the truth. So, The fact of the matter is, people are not, all people are not going to like you. So learn, and I'm only talking for those people that were like me that don't have, didn't have confidence or do not have confidence in yourself. It's not about, it's not being in competition with anyone. Like for instance, it casts down imaginations. I told you before that I had a, a problem in the past, and many do, so I'm not the only one. That's called the, uh, a work of the flesh. That's why we must get rid of the flesh, because the flesh causes problems. It, it causes imaginations to be formed. I had a problem with um, pornography. But the most I took that from me. One day I just woke up and I did not have a desire to do it anymore, so I can't take credit for that. That was just the most high having mercy. He was like, man, this boy down there. I mean, being honest with you, it's not to be perverted, but this is just to tell you, because I'm trying to meet you where you're at. I'm trying to talk to you for real, on a real level. One day I got up on the computer, because you know that's where that spirit comes through, that computer, to lure you in to pornography. One day I was sitting there, and I was kind of like, that's, that scene, I never use drugs nothing like this, so I'm kind of relating because it's the same kind of addiction. How, uh, that scene in, in New Jack City, Pookie, I believe it was. He says, calling me, man, it's calling me. So that pornography was calling me. I was sitting there, I didn't want to do it, but that spirit was calling me. And I was going to the act I was going into, and then 
I heard a voice tell me, say, do you know, do you not know that everybody's watching you? Literally. Not on this particular time, it wasn't one that was out loud that I heard. This one was from inside. They said, do you not know that everybody's watching you, literally? But it had so much pull over me, I did it anyway. Then after that, then you know how it makes you feel guilty and all these type of things. But then one day I woke up, and the Most High they said, you know, you can't handle it, I'm just going to take it from you. So he took that evil spirit out of me and took it away from me. And I have not looked back since, so I can't take credit. I'm not going to uh, still uh, rob him of his glory unless some words are come upon me. So I'm, I'm going to basically acknowledge he's the one that did it. I have so, many, so much proof that he exists and he's real that nobody else can't tell me that he's not real. Now, for as far as his name that a lot of people argue about, at one time, when I was growing up, I, I did have one of those experiences where they talk about the old hag, you know, you the sleep paralysis. I had those experiences when I was a little kid. And that's probably because I was lack of self-confidence you know, didn't know who I was, didn't know who the most high I was really. And I told you that I had that experience where I got on my knees at, at times where I was bowing down and praying to an image of what they now call Seja Borgia, who I thought was Jesus Christ. And I literally heard a voice, this time I literally heard a voice say, get up off your knees. That is not me. Now, if that was an evil spirit telling me to get up off my knees, that is not me. Why would the evil spirit tell me to get up off my knees? It probably would say, you don't, you don't stay down there. So that's why I know he's real. I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. There's other things that have happened that I've told you about before too, but I'm not going to tell you today. I have so many proofs that are self-evident that the Most High is the Creator is, is real. And I got so many evidence to prove you the other side is real too. So, lift up your head, you gates, you everlasting doors. What does that mean? Guard your heart. Because you are a gateway. You are a portal. Especially if you're clairvoyant or something like that. Whatever your gifts are. You're able to allow spiritual beings to come into this existence through you. Just consider it. So through, and I'm just keeping it real, if this is offensive, I'm going to try to say it in a way that's not offensive. Through that addiction of pornography, like I said, I don't, uh, I don't have no desires for no little kids, no children, no teenagers, no men, no transvestites, none of that type of stuff. I do have a, a natural attraction for beautiful women, curvaceous women. Things of that nature. It's, it's women. I love women. However, today, I respect uh, women more today through overstanding than I did back then when I had that spirit of per perversion or pornography over me. Women are not a piece of meat. Women are not uh, something that you use for your pleasure. Now, if you're in a relationship, and, and, and you know, basically you should be uh, married, or, 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 well, let me use the word, holy matrimony between you and the father and her, and not between you, her, and the state, 
the corporation. Because then the father, it's a, it's a conflict there. He said he would not share his glory with any. So, the, it, it, so it's either going to be the father or the state. Who going to be over your marriage? Or your union? Your uh, holy matrimony? That's just for consideration. I'm not telling nobody what to do. Just look that stuff up. So, I thank the Most Highest for His Word, for the truth, to show me how to live better. Like I said, you cannot change the past, but you can change your future. You can change today by this your decision. And then the thought I was having that um, pornography corrupts the mind on both sides, the man and the woman. Because a lot of times in pornography, they they get the the, the the best physical attributes to show in their for their vision. So a young man, you know, If, if you don't measure up to the porn stars or the woman, if you don't measure up to the porn stars, now, now you got a complex. That put a complex on me. If you know what I'm saying. In that area, I'm probably probably average at my best in that area. You know, once again, that's my concept. I don't know. <laughs> but it don't matter, though. It really don't matter. But, but they'll have you...